Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, Pablo Hidalgo, and the whole Lucasfilm debacle mm -hmm. that that shouldn't have been a debacle. No. Uh, but it has become a debacle. That is the return of Luke Skywalker. Uh, for those of you who, who haven't watched The Mandalorian yet, whoops, I'm sorry. It's so oh, by now, if you don't know, this is not a Star <laughs> Wars fan. I'm sorry. There are people who are literally still like, oh my God, you ruined Endgame for me. I'm like, it's, everybody knows. It's, nobody's hiding it anymore, so. Any people who aren't Mandalorian fans know. Yeah, everybody knows. It's literally on the, the all the headlines of all the blogs. Don't go to Twitter. Don't go to Twitter. Don't leave your house. Don't turn on the internet. Uh, so we're going to talk about that and how it does appear, it does appear that uh, Mark Hamill is sort of uh, throwing shade at Lucasfilm's past actions, mm -hmm. and As he should, and it looks to me like he's sort of low key throwing Pablo Hidalgo under the bus uh, okay. in a tweet. Eh, okay, I think so. I think so. Uh, that is an opinion. Um, yeah, because yeah, he's a fan reaction. Yes. So yeah, it could be. Yeah, we're, he's we're, not gonna come out and do that, pub, you know, flat out because he's classier than that. He, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He says other things that are worse. He lets Maybe it fly. Not. I take it back. Sometimes he says some things that aren't the greatest. We're, we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about all of this. This uh, Luke Skywalker situation and Mark Hamill coming out and uh, you know giving giving Lucasfilm props for giving us the Luke Skywalker. I think that fans expected that Mark Hamill expected when he signed back on. The Luke Skywalker we all deserved. The Luke Skywalker we all deserved. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 165,000 subs. Yeah. Hoping for 200,000 uh, very soon, hopefully. Thank you so much. And thank you for a fantastic year. This year has been uh, amazing. Yeah, it really for growth, has. yes. Yeah, it has been. So thanks so much to the... And here's hoping everyone has a much better 2021. I know a lot of people have not had a good year. Oh, God, yeah. it's It's been terrible for so many people for so many reasons, not just, uh, you know, coronavirus, but there, there's been so many other things happening this year that we're... Right. So we're wishing you all a better not 2021. Good. Um, even the people we don't like. We're yeah, feeling generous. I, I, wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish bad things to happen to people. That would. What kind of douche does that? Oh, Twitter. I wouldn't <laughs> wish... Somebody be, to be stuck in a Groundhog Day scenario reliving 2020 over again. Mm -mm. Not even on my worst enemy. So, all right. So let's talk about uh, Mark Hamill. And um, he's had a couple of tweets. So his first tweet dealing with the uh, the appearance of Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian was that uh, he thought the cameo was the greatest gift. Uh, thank you, John and Dave. Mm -hmm. John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Thank you for basically giving us the Luke Skywalker everybody wanted, wanted to see. Yes, what we wanted to see with the sequel trilogy. Not uh, sad sack Luke Skywalker. Well, you know, not even sad sack Luke Skywalker in Last Jedi, but when The Force Awakens came out, the way the trailers led people to believe and the way that it was kind of pitched to people about was that the, the old cast was coming back. They were going to be together. We were going to see them together again. Chewie, we're home. Yeah. We're together again. And then, you know, we're going to add some new characters. And that's not what they did. How flippin' hard was it to do one scene like that, at least? I mean, how hard? And then we had Last Jedi. We don't. We know where all this went. So, you know. I mean, it's pretty bad. We did a video the other day talking about Variety. Industry publication Variety calling out that uh, Pablo Hidalgo's insensitive tweet about fans crying over the uh, the reappearance of proper Luke Skywalker um, reopened a bunch of old wounds. Yeah, because basically he is one of those people in the story group, which we know how what a great bang-up job the story group's been doing. And he's personally probably pissed off that it didn't go the way his fanfics want. He wanted his fanfics to go. Yeah, so people are thrilled at the return of Luke Skywalker. Um, we're hearing rumors that... Within Lucasfilm, people are not happy because they've been trying to de-Luke Star Wars. Right. They have a picture of his face crossed out oh, yeah, and everything yeah. else. Can't have those white men heroes. Well, we saw what they did with Luke. Even in the, the animated shorts, they made him out to be a dumbass. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, they, they, re they retconned A New Hope and different things to make him be incompetent. Yeah. So they've been doing this. They've been trying to get rid of Luke. They keep talking about how the... Uh, the Star Wars saga needs to expand beyond the Skywalkers. But here, look... That's like saying, hey, we're going to make Superman comics without Superman in them. Right. Well, Star think, Wars is about the Skywalkers. But even, even you, can go, you can go and make other stories besides yeah. the Skywalkers. You can. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. But you can. And you can do stories like when Mandalorian, they brought Luke in, but it was about characters that weren't the Skywalkers. And you can do that and do a good job. But there's no reason at all 
to disrespect and lower the classic characters, kill them off screen, all the stuff that they did with these movies, yeah. just to elevate their new their new characters that no one likes. And one, part of the reason no one likes them, besides the fact that they're they're they're, they're weak characters, they're lazy. You had opportunities like Finn and wasted it. It's because you completely ruined what they loved and said, oh, this, so you did that so you could like the new characters. Yeah. You, it's like I said with soap operas. You can't, if you have a guy you like or a girl you like, killing off their significant other isn't going to mean they're going to like you. No, it's like a zero sum game. Like they thought, well, if we uh, turn Luke into a sad sack, get him out of the picture, then people are going to love these new characters. Doesn't work that way. And it didn't work that way because even the new characters. They fucked it all up. Right. You know, Finn could have been. Oh, my God. He could have been amazing. He could have been the Luke Skywalker to this generation. You turned him into a joke. Right. You know? Well, if it had been, if it had been current year, he would have been the Luke Skywalker of the generation because now they would have got points for that. Well, that's true. But Back then, it was all about women forces female and feminism. And, you know, that was the, that was the Twitter push then. Back then, we we're only talking five years. And it wasn't that long ago. In 2020, ago, yeah. it's because, you know, frankly, because he's black. They would have used it. They would have used black people to try to, to, to get bonus points for it. It wasn't because they cared. It was because they would have tried to use them as well, a shield. Well, that, that's the thing. Because a lot of this this virtue signaling, it's not because they actually care. It's because they think that's what's trendy on Twitter. And I think they're starting to realize, like, you know, you can bring in new fans, but you got to keep the old fans happy, too. And look at Hasbro. Hasbro took a beating on Star Wars toys mm -hmm. because they went all in on the sequel trilogy. Compare... The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi toys to what they did with The Rise of Skywalker, where they barely did Rise of Skywalker toys, and they mixed it in with classic trilogy characters. Right. Well, I was going to say, too, you know, you said about that, you about Star Wars, and that you, you guys had characters that could have gone well. Yeah. But characters are more than just agendas and checkboxes. You oh, have yeah. to actually have decent writing, decent characterization, decent reasons people will, will like characters other than, oh, because we're Palpatine for no reason in the last movie. Because they didn't think it through. You know, yeah. there's characters you wasted all of this. You wasted all these opportunities. And then instead of taking responsibility for wasting the opportunities, it's all the fans' fault because we're going to try the bullying tactics that we've seen over the last four years or so. People aren't falling for it anymore. No. Um, and, you know, again, when you have outlets like Variety calling out Pablo Hidalgo for mocking fans being emotional to proper Luke Skywalker returning, I mean, how shitty is that? Your, your job literally is to promote and protect the Star Wars brand. You've been doing it for decades. Clearly... That's all the Star Wars brand, not just the stuff the story group decided to come up with in the last couple of years. Right. They're fanfics, right? They, mm. they burn down the EU and they're they're uh, uh, writing their fanfics. But your job is to protect this legacy and to make sure that people have good feelings about Star Wars. That's literally your, your job. You're on payroll to make sure people feel good about Star Wars and they spend money. That's what Disney wants. But you're telling the fans, oh, you can feel good, but not that good. And definitely not about Luke Skywalker. Right. Because this is just embarrassing. And then we had, you know, Hidalgo was out there too, making tweets, which I'd never seen before, calling Star Wars fans shitty and everything else. I'm yeah. like, what the hell? I mean, can people be dicks? Yes. Yeah, people can be dicks. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that there aren't. Because there are some total dicks in the fandoms. I'm not going to make excuses and say there aren't. But the majority of people aren't those people. It's kind of like working retail. Just because you have, you know, a bad experience with a couple of difficult customers here and there doesn't mean that, you know, everybody should go get bent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your job, though, is to to be basically customer service. Your job is to to put a, a good face on there so people feel good about Star Wars. And to uphold the legacy, yes. not just the stuff that you had a part in. Yeah, you didn't build this. You got to realize that the current, the current regime at Lucasfilm, you didn't build this. You didn't build any of this. Mm -mm. You know, and people aren't taking and that's what the whole thing is. The stuff that they're building, their new stuff, their version of Luke Skywalker and their new characters, people are not taking to like they are George's. Same characters. with we see it with the shows like Thundercats and She-Ra. It's like you're not picking people who actually care or well, even the people who are supposed to care. That you're not picking the people, the right custodians. Um yeah. and now you did get I think Filoni and Favreau are proving that they are the right custodians. For now, I do have some concerns about Filoni from time to time. But yeah. he seems to be like sometimes Team KK. But you know Well I think, you know, look, they need to be Team Star Wars. Exactly. Fan. That's everybody needs to be on. And, and look, fandoms, and this is why we get so frustrated. We talked about this on live stream last night. People get so frustrated because 
fandom used to be an escape for people who had different beliefs and different points of view, whatever, but they could all get together and agree that, hey, we like this show. We like these movies. We like these comic books. Let's talk about things that unite us. you know. And, and yeah, there's always been fan bitching, but not, not to the extent that not we've seen like it. Not like now, no. And a lot of it is the people working at these companies, including Lucasfilm, throwing kerosene on a fire. Yeah, going out. And then they're, and their friendly media, that are their friends, going out and trying to like you know keep fights going. Yeah, because it gets hits. Right. You know, they get a lot of hits. So here we have Mark Hamill, who has been uh, pretty vocal about his dislike of, you know, sad old milk For chugging For very Luke. good reasons. This is my, yeah. And he's, he's you know, but he hasn't come out and just full on blasted Disney because I'm sure there's something in his contract. He, he said he was paid. done, though. He said he wasn't yeah. going to do it anymore. And I wonder, I mean, but these guys got him back. Because they probably said if we could bring do it for the it, fans. Yeah, do it for the fans. If we could actually bring proper Luke Skywalker back, would you be on board? And he did more than I thought he did. They used de aging technology. I thought he just did the voice. I actually thought it was another actor. That's, they, I, I'm still torn. Is it? I still I'm still I, confused by that. I, I don't know. They never really specified How, what. There was a mention of another person, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, I thought it was another. I, I actually, he looks in some frames. Uh, Deep fake Luke looks kind of more like Sebastian Stan to me. But it wasn't Sebastian Stan, no, but you know. No. But anyway, so yeah, Mark Hamill tweeted, Sometimes the greatest gifts are the most unexpected and something you never realize you wanted until it's given. Thank God. And then followed up with this. And this is where I'm getting the uh, low-key shade being thrown mm. at Pablo Hidalgo. Hashtag no words. Seeing fans' reactions to Luke's return is something I will cherish forever. Good. They deserve it. Yeah, their anticipation seeing an X-Wing, Episode 6, robes, a lightsaber, green lightsaber, gloved hand, ungloved hand, a force choke, and R2 was overwhelming and very moving to me. And the reaction uh, to this is, you know, pretty positive. I mean, we got some people that are kind of like, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I feel bad, too, because I would have been... Uh, so much more emotional about Luke Skywalker returning had I still had good feelings about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But because of all the bullshit around the sequel trilogy, and in particular, a lot of people at Lucasfilm showing outright disgust and disdain for the fandom and for George Lucas and the legacy of Star Wars, my, my uh, reaction was very muted. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, this is cool. Five years ago, I would have been born well, like a baby. It doesn't help that you found out about it before you saw it, too. So you knew it was coming because you found out about it before you saw it. But to me, I, I, I had my reaction. I wrote an article on this today. And actually reading the comments of people made me cry. So I'm trying not to right now. Hold on. But it did because I was seeing these people and they're just so genuinely happy. And I understand that. And that's what that's what that's what you know fans want, and 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 it was just you know it was ha I was happy to see that they did it, but I was really happy to see how people reacted to it. It yeah. made me very happy. I just I I'm trying not to cry. Sorry. Uh, thank you, John and Dave. Hashtag you're you're tearing up. Oh my God, she's actually crying. Are you okay? Yeah. Pablo Hidalgo, you shut your bitch mouth. Don't you dare. Don't you <laughs> even fucking dare. Um, Steve Chung. Thank you for making me feel like a nine-year-old again and for making me cry tears of joy instead of during, uh, instead during this harsh time. Uh, thank you guys for giving me the thrills and feels that I had when I was a child watching Star Wars for the first time in the 80s. Thank you for the best 2020 ending and a new hope for 2021. Thank you, John and Dave, for bringing George Lucas' Star Wars back from ruin. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, two of the greatest, nicest, most creative individuals I've ever had the pleasure of working with. This is coming from Phil Lamar. I know, I like Phil Lamar. Who himself is actually a very nice guy. We, I mean, there, it goes on and on. Then there was one from his wife on there, too. <laughs> so that she's, she's like... The Jedi that stole my heart and spirit has done it again, coming from his heart and telling us this gift of surprise was a triumph and a miracle. Um, there's a lot more comments than that. Heck, um, even What's Her Nuts from Mary Sue... Um, Rachel Leishman was even putting a, a thank you, hashtag thank you, uh, tweet out for uh, Filoni and Favreau. I was like, I didn't include it in my article because she pisses me off all the time. But I, even, even people who were like, you know, slamming on the fans are like, we're happy this was back. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's what got me was reading the comments and reading Mark Hamill's reaction. Because I can't imagine. Can you imagine? That you spent all these years keeping this alive and you're known for this character and you worked really hard for it and you mean so much to so many people. And then you turn around and they do what they do to it. 
And then yeah. you think, okay, you're like, you're like completely disheartened and think that, you know, I'm done. I'm never doing this again because what's the point? And then this is what happens. I mean, we've seen it, I think, with like with she wrote with Melanie Britt and stuff. And then the reaction people you know, gave her made her happy and stuff. I, I can't imagine, you know, how disheartened you would be. And then to see this, it would just be so amazing. That That is like your life's work, right? Because I mean, you know, I mean, Mark he's Hamill. He's done a lot of other things. He's he's done a lot, but that right. is always what most people are going to know Mark Hamill for is he's Luke Skywalker and one of the most iconic heroes in history. And not only did Lucasfilm burn down the legacy of Luke Skywalker, they took the light in it. And then they people from not everybody, but people from Lucasfilm uh, attacked fans who were so crushed by what they saw. Again, you know, I'll tell you the last Jedi for me is what turned me off to star Wars completely. I didn't even watch the Mandalorian at first. It took me a couple weeks to come around to actually watching it because I was so disgusted. Oh, yeah, I did, but you didn't, yeah. I was so disgusted by not just how The Last Jedi went down, but the the glee. That I think that's what gets me. It's like the they were they were absolutely giddy to to assassinate Luke Skywalker in the way that they did. And it wasn't just in The Last Jedi. Again, we talked about the animated shorts. They made him out to be a dumbass. They wanted people to like forget Luke Skywalker was the core of, of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. They they're like we're we're moving beyond Luke, and by the way, he's a dumbass. And you can you can move beyond a character. Like look at the Mandalorian. They introduced all these new characters, a lot of them great new characters that we got to know better than even some of the the movie characters because yeah. we we spent more time with them. But you know they didn't do it at the. Uh, the expense of the original trilogy characters. Right. You know, that's what they, they didn't do it at the expense. And they had the, the, the all those female characters that were kicking ass and taking names. And they were just good characters. And they didn't have to lessen other characters, you know, to, to make them powerful. They didn't have to make it a big point where they were putting all these articles out and, and going around saying, because, you know, feminism and Star Wars and all that. They just showed they didn't tell. Because no one cared if they were female or male. They were just like kick-ass characters that were done well. Which is what Star Wars always did. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I, of course he's excited. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for all the fans that are happy. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the one thing that, for the most part, I mean, there are people that are, you know, like whatever. But for the most part, that, that all the fans can agree that this was the right, that this is what we needed Luke to be Even in the Even ones who like the new sequel movies still were excited they brought Luke onto here. Even if, okay, just hypothetically speaking, The Last Jedi, even if Luke was a sad sack in The Last Jedi, if he didn't die in that movie, they could have redeemed him in the last one. Like, no, Luke Skywalker is coming back. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Ryan Johnson just has disdain for Luke Skywalker. There's no question in my mind. Never was. Now we're hearing from insiders that whenever they talk about the the failure of Star Wars, they are throwing Ryan Johnson under the bus, even though Kathleen Kennedy is just as responsible. She Um, let it happen, even if she wasn't directly responsible. She All is. Right, oh, at the end of the day, she is directly responsible. Yeah, I'll give her fine. We'll I won't even give her that. At the end of the day, she is directly responsible. She was in charge. She had one job. She had one job was to oversee this multi-billion dollar franchise. And on her watch, it all went to shit. There's no way she didn't know it was an oopsie. No, I won't even give her an out. There is no out for that because she was ultimately in charge. In charge of what, though? This is why I'm scratching my head. In charge of what? You couldn't even piece together a coherent trilogy. I know. You were making it up as you and went even along. The ones that were that were white knighting for them by the return of, or by the rise of Skywalker, they were all like, oh, this is bullshit because they didn't get yeah. what they wanted. And then they're like, oh, there wasn't a clear plan. It's like, no shit, sure. No shit. So I guess I guess on so many levels this feels like vindication. We've got um you know, the media actually turning on guys like Pablo Hidalgo at Lucasfilm. Well, what he did was crap. It was horrible. And but, you I, know, I love it. He, they, they didn't do anything when these people attacked fans before. But now they're going to say something because he went too far. You know what I mean? They've been doing it for years, people like us. That's the thing. This has been going on for years, guys. And even if you like The Last Jedi, and there are, are I would consider, legit Star Wars fans that like The Last Jedi. Right, you're, you're allowed to be a fan and like The Last to. Jedi. It was a pretty movie. It had nice cinematography. The difference between us and some of them is that we will say you are allowed to like it. They will tell us we're not allowed to disagree. We're not, we have to like it. And if we don't, we're not a real fan. But the problem I have is when you've got officials in an official capacity whose job it is to, uh, you know, basically be fan relations, showing outright hatred for fans and fan reactions when this is exactly what you want. exactly what he should have been. Disney eats this shit up. Like you were saying the other day, Disney, they want you to cry in front of Cinderella Castle. Yep. 
That's, you know? that's, that's a win for them. I mean, Disney, oh my God. Disney, if under different circumstances, they would have had Star Wars Theory crying over Luke Skywalker. In a commercial. In a commercial for Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. You know, um, which actually is a good, a good uh, segue. We got some other things we can tie into this uh, real quick here. But... There are rumors circulating that the Mandalorian characters, because they've actually been so popular, might replace the sequel trilogy characters in Galaxy's Edge. I think that would be a smart move. I've heard this before. I've heard this going around. It's been going around YouTube. I know Drunk3PO mentioned it the other day, too. That this this is something we've been hearing for a little while now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Um, But Pro put this up, and if I were Disney, I'd be like, this is the only Star Wars that people give a shit about. Galaxy's Edge is kind of a dud. Let's get the Mando in there. Let's get Baby Yoda. Plus, Galaxy's Edge is set up in such a way that they can be rethemed easily. And we noticed that if you've been down there and you're a Star Wars fan, you can tell that there were things that they were like almost like Tatooine, almost like, you know, Hoth or whatever, you know, not Hoth, but like Tatooine or Endor or whatever, almost like areas. So they could totally retheme those. And that was set in such a way that they can't. I think that was probably Imagineering because the original plan was it was original trilogy. And then it was Kathleen Kennedy and the story group. The story group, including Pablo Hidalgo, uh, who decided that they were going to make all new characters that people didn't know anything about. You know, I want to see Luke Skywalker walking around Galaxy's Edge. You know, I want to see Darth Vader. I, I want to see. I want to see the Mandalorian. I want to see Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. You know, Grogu. Grogu. I'm sorry. You're allowed to call them either way, though. They told they, uh, Favreau and Filoni said you can call you can call them by either name. I would actually be kind of okay with a Grogu and Yoda dance party. Oh my god. <laughs> Just as long as we don't have what's her face. We've got these new characters. Who gives a shit about blue hair spy girl? Oh yeah, they they get she looks like a that cosplayer. Narrative. They put her in the gaming in the games too, and no one cares about her. You know, I what, never saw her, and we've been there a couple times. You know what they're gonna do, right? They're gonna they're gonna have Batu in season three of The Mandalorian. Trying to make sure that they push it. They were going to try to push it in the films. They pushed it in the end of uh, when you rode uh, the the Star Tours. Yeah. They kept forever making sure it always ended in back two. Yep. Um, so that's that's one thing here. And also, which we talked about a little bit before. Boy, Pro's been busy. He's been busy. We just let him have a, the autonomy to do whatever he wants. He We know he's legit. He can he can say what he wants. Um, we disclaim it. Be like, these are rumors. You uh-huh. know? But celebrities should be nervous about this. And I I agree with this because Disney is inching closer and closer to having completely digital actors. They're inching closer and closer to Simone. They are. Yeah. Because if, and they've been kind of, it's look at how they've been toying with it. It started with Tron Legacy where they Mm de-age badly, by the way, Jeff Bridges. But then you look at like literally every Marvel movie, every Pirates movie, they keep experimenting with de-aging actors. Mm -hmm. And then the next logical step, of course, is we put, Another actor's face on an actor, which we saw with Tarkin, which actually worked out uh, pretty well. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of so you look- can bring characters back. So you can bring them back, and also though the potential problem is uh, you can have digital actors that don't age. I they just, don't need to, to me, get paid. I don't think that's going to happen for a while. I'll tell you why. Expense. It's uh, depending on who the celebrity is. It, it's probably still cheaper to hire someone than it is because you have to hire them to do the voice and stuff anyway. Yeah. It might be cheaper just to hire them to do it than it would be to do all the CGI work. Yeah. It depends, though. If it's a really, you know, high, like, A-list, A-list actor, that might not be the case. But for, you know, some actors, it might just be easier um, and less expensive. We had this conversation before, I remember, when they were inserting celebrities into, like, Coke commercials. And uh, we oh, had... Oh, yeah. Well, the, yes. The old the, the ones that were passed. Gene stuff. Kelly yes. was in it. Gene Kelly was in the Coke commercial. Yeah. And then they had uh, Natalie Cole yes. singing with Nat King Cole. Yes. And they're like, where does it end? And the thing is, is... I don't think it does. I think if there's a way to bring people back, now I'm thinking Back to the Future Part 2 where Ronald Reagan and Michael Jackson are asking to take your order, you know, the, the Max Headroom style. Yeah, Max Headroom. Oh my God, they should bring back, back Max Headroom. Anyway. I mean, could you see them like Disney? I could, to- I could totally see Disney making virtual Walt Disney to do a new Walt Disney Presents on Disney+. Plus. If Disney was smart, they'd make virtual uh, ride-throughs of the rides that, that people love that are no longer with us, like the original Journey to Imagination, Horizons, awesome. etc. People would, you know, but for, for, for VR or if you go to the park, you can go to, people would love that. They would go nuts for it. They'd make a mint on that. But let's go back to the point because we have to be somewhere. We do. Uh, so we're going to wrap this one up, I think. But uh, yeah, very interesting to see Mark Hamill come out and say what he said again. Making hearts out of my hands for Mark Hamill. Yeah, this is... And- 
a, a coded uh, smackdown of Pablo Hidalgo. I don't always agree with everything Mark Hamill says. However, I 100% agree with him with the way this has gone down with Luke. And I'm so yeah. happy. I'm so happy for him that, you know, this will give him something that, you know, that he's excited about. And he has every right to be excited about it. And I think it's amazing. It is. Uh, so, so let's all go out and show more love for Mark. Yeah, let's hope that uh, Disney learned a very painful lesson. In the I would day. hope they learned, but I am so afraid I'm they're not, not going to because they're not. Breath. They're just doubling down on the Lucasfilm Story Group, which have, are, are behind most of this shit. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up? Yep. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.